Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real world value. Welcome back to another episode. I just wanted to give a quick warning before this episode started that the sound quality is not the best. I apologize. I had a little bit of technical difficulties. It has been resolved now, but I would still like to use this audio because I think I captured some great thoughts. And if I try to re-record it, I don't think I will have the same exact effect because I was really honestly speaking about some things and some frustrations that I definitely had with the space. And if I re-record, I don't think it's going to feel as natural. So I do thank you for bearing with me. With that said, let's get to the episode. So I predicted that 2022 was going to be the year of play to earn gaming. However, to this point, it really has been a disappointment. Although there have been some very successful games such as Axie Infinity, which unfortunately has just recently made some headlines because of a breach in security. However, that has really been the gold standard for games. But today we're going to discuss why I think play to earn gaming is a complete failure to this point. I don't know exactly where I heard this, but I thought a very great idea was to change the whole concept from play to earn gaming to play and earn gaming. Because the huge problem that we're having right now with all of these NFT play to earn games is that they're just not fun. And you can definitely tell that the people that are designing these games and putting them together are the people that are more from the crypto side than the gaming side. And I don't know about you, but primarily the number one reason why I play a game and what I'm looking for is something that is fun. And otherwise, if I'm just playing the game to earn money, it is simply a job. And I don't know, but I did not come into this whole Web3 space to do something that I do not enjoy just for the sake of making money. And if that were the case, I would just stick with my nine to five, doing what I do offline and running a family business and all the stresses related to that and not focus on all this stuff because the majority of these play to earn games that I have played, they're just not fun. And for the most part, some of them are just simply just clicking. And you can definitely see on some of these videos on YouTube where they have these click farms or whatever these games are, and they're just literally just there pressing, 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 pressing so that they can earn. And it is really just a tedious task that is just not enjoyable. And a lot of these games that I went into to try to uh, sample or see what's really going on in the community because people were talking about how much they're earning on there. When I was in there for just less than an hour, honestly, and I was sick of it. I just did not want to go back to it. So that is a real problem that we're having. And a lot of these NFT projects are speaking about they're launching a play to earn game or it's even on the roadmap. But when you really think about it, what experience do they have as far as launching a game or creating a game? That is no easy task. And just because you understand tokenomics and understand how these economies work and how the community can generate funds with it, that does not mean you're going to make a playable game that is enjoyable. And you can look at even some of these apps. They're very simple, but they are very sticky. You could play literally hours and hours and hours on the most basic concept, but it is fun and you're not getting anything from it. And that is the whole pitch of this whole play to earn space is that the time that you spend on your app and doing all these different things and you have gained nothing for it. So that is time lost. But I'll even tell you this, the time that you spend playing these click to earn games or whatever it is that is just not fun, that is time lost as well, because not only did you not have fun, but you could have done the same exact thing let's say even flipping burgers and you would have had a greater impact on the world because you're actually feeding people. Just sitting there and clicking on your phone or whatever it might be, that is really not producing anything or contributing in any kind of way whatsoever. So I think it's even worse than just getting a job that you hate or just playing a game that has no sort of earning potential whatsoever because at least you enjoyed yourself for that period of time. But of course, this is not going to be all negative. There are some good things that do come out of it. And I think any kind of studio or program or NFT community or whatever it is that's going to be launched that starts with the game first and then happens to put it on the blockchain is going to be much more successful in the long run. And I can think of off the top of my head, just to name a few, there's Warsaken over on Wax, which is a card game, a role playing game. And that was really designed to be a physical card game. And then they just happened to put it on the blockchain once all of this Web3 stuff and NFTs came out. So that was really designed game first. Then also you have Blanco's Block Party, which I spent a lot of time playing that. That was actually really fun. 
However, I'm not a huge gamer anymore, I won't lie, although Tropic Vibes was my initial gamer tag, and that is how I started with that whole name, is actually uh, from a clothing line and then my Xbox gamer tag, which I still is active. However, at this point in time, I don't dedicate a lot of time to that because number one, I'm running a business and then all the time that I put into Web3 doing this podcast, the production, email, everything, I don't really have a lot of time to play games. But Blanco's Block Party was an enjoyable experience and the time that I did spend in it was really fun. And although I didn't really get into all of the earning mechanisms of it or even earning some of the skins that which are uh, really sold for real world dollars and all those different things. I just never really got into that. But the experience that I had just running around the world, doing the little tasks and the missions and everything, it was enjoyable. Also, there's another game that is called War Rider. This game has a lot of potential. However, after multiple times of trying to play this over, I forget which holiday it was. I was off for a couple days and I really want to get into this game. I found that the reason why I just didn't enjoy it was because the way that game is when you spawn. Well, first of all, I'll explain what the game is. It is basically a survival game. Think of like a Mad Max type of world where you're trying to earn tokens and uh, you're mining. And there's these uh, cars that are basically they're shooting each other and they, they can form factions and teams and all those different things. It is survival. You're going out into the world. You're trying to mine the coins that is called Benzos, I believe it was called. And then you can uh, bring that back to your base. And then later on, you can actually convert that out into a uh, real cryptocurrencies and get it off of the game into the real world. However, the premise of the game is basically your survival game and you're going out there. And the thing that I did not enjoy about this is with these factions and the teams, they hang out around the area where you spawn. So as a new player coming into this game, hopefully they have changed this, but after doing that for a couple days and just every time I spawned up, I was shot or I would spawn into the game and I would just throttle it and just try to drive away as fast as possible. But these teams, they just hang out there. And they're just picking off all the new players. So it really was an enjoyable experience. However, there is a lot of potential. And I should really check out that game again because I haven't gone in the world after that weekend. It's just because, as I said, it just was not fun getting shot and destroyed every single time I respawn. But assuming they figure out a way to make a safe zone or whatever it might be and prevent uh, teams from just ganging up on all the new players coming into the game, I think that has potential to be really fun because it brings me back to the old PlayStation gaze with uh, those demolition derby games and uh, those survival games uh, that, that are out there in the desert and just playing all those really fun times. And we weren't earning anything in those days. And we would literally spend the whole weekend just playing that, going back and forth swapping the controller. Once you lost, you get off the system, your friend would come on. So it is that style of game, which is just great fun. And I think there's a lot of potential in that. And going forward, any kind of play to earn game, I think that's going to be the primary focus. I can tell you right now, the game that I spend the most time playing is these uh, silly games that are simulators for football teams on my cell phone. And I have a professional football team one and then a college football team one. And honestly, I have limited myself to only using that when there's nothing going on. Either I'm at work during some downtime between uh, tasks, getting ready to leave, the store is getting ready to close, or very limited times because once I start playing that, it is very addictive. And I get absolutely nothing for playing that game because it is just fun. So that just proves that a good game is just so much more sticky and more valuable to me and uh, my life. I don't know what you would say, but I would much rather have fun for an hour or however long I do end up playing that game than to spend eight, nine, 10 hours and just working a regular job. I would just much, much rather run my business and do the things that I'm doing offline than do that. But speaking of sticky and just games that are fun, have you noticed that in these Discord communities, a lot of these servers, at least the more fun ones anyways, the one I could think about and that I always talk about is the 90s, babe, is they actually have Discord server games. And for the most part, many of those, just the, whatever points or rankings or whatever it is, rewards that you're racking up in there, is really just a server-specific or game-specific token. And it's not really like it's going offline and turning into any kind of real currency. However, they're very sticky and they're fun. But that is about to change because Draco Dice, which I've covered, is the wax. Dice has the promise of being interchained. And it is a very interesting project in the sense that 
These dice are supposed to be ported from game to game, so it allows developers to not have to worry about the whole mechanisms of designing the dice and how it rolls and all of that stuff. They can just simply connect, use Draco dice, bring it into their game, so you can travel with your dice from game to game, which is a very cool idea. Well, there is actually a server game that they are partnering with another company that allows Discord server owners to include this game just as another way of having the community stick around and play against each other and have some fun. They have some Draco dice. They play this game against each other. It's a, from what I understand, a mixture of Minesweeper and Battleship. <laughs> so it is uh, supposed to be very fun. I haven't played it yet myself. However, I think this is going to be a trend that we do see going forward is that more and more, we're going to see these sort of sticky games that we're going to see in Discord servers, and it's going to bring the community together. And I'd love to see how this is going to really bring more NFTs into this thing, because right now with the dice, that just really opened up my eyes and say, you know what? This really has some potential. Other NFTs can do different things to somehow gamify these tokens within the servers to play some sort of uh, game. And it doesn't even have to be play to earn, but it's just going to be a fun way to interact with the community. And I'm looking forward to seeing where that really goes. So I would love to know, up to this point, have you had any experience with play to earn gaming or just crypto gaming in general, any kind of blockchain games? NFT gamification, whether it be in these lands or just any kind of way for that matter. I would love to know what your experience has been to this point. Are you bullish on the whole NFT gaming space or are you just waiting to see what the big game developers do and how they adopt all of this technology? Because I think it really has some serious potential. However, up until this point, it has been pretty disappointing for me. What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear what you think at Tropic Vibes on Twitter. And if you have any game recommendations or play to earn suggestions that is actually fun to play, I would love to hear it. But as usual, I want to thank you for taking the time for listening to this episode, spending this time with me as we build and grow within Web3 together. So until the next episode, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.